Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, blogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, vlogs such as 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, Audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify, Mixcloud and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and our official website www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat The pitch is where we sleep And the pitch is where we talk Welcome to Coaching with JBK Welcome, welcome, it's your host JBK with another Olympic special So we are basically wrapping up quite well with the Olympics and the reason why I'm saying that is it's basically been nearly two weeks and that's how long the, the Olympics really last. Hence the reason why you see it for you see it for basically four once every four years and assuming that you want to get yourself sort of mindset into it. Nowadays I don't think there's many as that's as interested as much as possible but you gotta be um it comes around f- once every four years and i get that sport is just literally plastered all over the wall um since the 2012 olympics everybody's just been like okay there's there's sport here there's sport there let's just keep doing this let's keep keep doing that i get that but now we're kind of getting to the point of the end of the end of the the olympics is coming up but that's not why i'm talking to you guys today it's the reason why I'm talking to you guys today is it's about looking after yourself and looking after yourself in the right way in the terms of of this in terms of mental health and what athletes have to go through and what the top professionals have to go through in order to look after themselves mentally, physically, psychologically, socially, just just all the all the little things that they have to do. And it's not just a coach but it's also a player. So that's what I'm going to go on to. And that's what we're really going to be talking about. Um, And and I really want you to take it in and really want you to hear it and really want you to understand it. And I'm going to come from a place of personal as well as subjective. I'm going to come with two two different sides. So the objective and a subjective side. Um, But before I go into that, I want you to you guys to actually have a look at LJA, his his podcast and everything is doing extremely well. He's got so much going on and he's got so much um, talking about just different subjects that really give a, a new light to what we're what we're looking at. And also G Man, G Man Gavin Henry, he's he's really putting a lot of a lot of work into the little top tens and and things like that. And I really want you to have a have a check o- over those as well. So have a check. We're on podcast. We're on Podbeam. We're on Player Player FM. We're in, and this is pitch talk that I'm talking about. We're on verbal. We're on so many different uh, waves, and you guys can have a look at them all over YouTube. We've got Facebook. We've got so many different ones. Podcasts, Podbean. We're looking all over. This is for the vlogs and the blogs that you're really looking for and looking forward to. We're on levels. We're on real levels, and we're really trying to get ourselves to the next level. So the more you listen, the more we can move forward. And I've seen so many that have done that and we're just trying to get there ourselves. But hopefully you give us the same likes and, and the same content and the same playlists and the downloads that you give to some of the bigger names just like us. So hopefully Pitch Talk will be one of your first podcasts that, that you download. Now that I've got that out of the way and the nice little promotional stuff that you really deal with, I'm now going to bring your attention to what we're really talking about, the mental health stuff, the things that really, really pushes pushes the, the boat. And it's really been pushing the boat for the last, I would say, about three years. So where we were talking about it maybe in 2018, but not really gathering much pace, it really picked up a lot more pace in 2020 when everybody was in lockdown, when the entire world was in lockdown. And the reason why we're in, we're in lockdown is because of COVID. Now, what that meant for, for a lot of people is that they couldn't get to see their family. They couldn't get to see their friends. They couldn't do exactly what they would normally do. 
they didn't necessarily have a normal life. Their normal life literally completely went from we're really going for this at 100% to you're now stopping for for zero. You're not starting, you're not stopping, you're just, you're just not doing anything. So whatever you had planned, start again. That's the first thing. That's what really got us really focusing on, on, on our mental health. And Simone Biles brought it up, as well as Alex Scott, as well as quite a few other, other athletes have really brought it up and talking about what their mental health is really about and how it's really changed since the since the lockdown began, which is in March of 2020 for the UK. For some, it was probably in November of 2019. For some, it was probably in January of 2020. For another, for another set, it's still continuing. The first lockdown is, has not lift, been lifted. And that's, that's in some countries. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to get this wrong. But we're talking about mental health and we're talking about psychologically and, and things like that. And let's, let's put it into context. When you're going at 100 miles an hour and you know what, exactly what you want, you're really pushing your boundaries. As, as a coach or as a player, you know what you really, really want to get to. You want to get to the pinnacle of your career, the pinnacle of your sport, the pinnacle of your life. And you really want to hit it at the top speed. But then a nice little bump in the road comes. Now the question is, is how you deal with that. The problem sometimes for a lot of people that they have to deal with it alone. How to deal with it alone is the real truth of where they get to. Because when they deal with it alone, they don't know necessarily what was on the other side of that decision, what was on the other side of that that feeling, what was on the other side of how to deal with things, because they weren't necessarily told. They weren't necessarily really given much. But mentality-wise, they might have said, I've just got to go and get it. I just have to go and get it. It's not going to stop. I might have to go and get that gold medal. I might have to make sure that I'm on the podium. I might have to just make sure that I'm competing. I might have to make sure that I'm just making uh, that I'm just there on on the on the event. That would be all that they need is just just knowing that they're they're literally at the event, regardless of whether it's in Tokyo, Rio, London, where it could be in France it, um, for the next Olympics, which is ironically in three years' time. And just just little things like that where you really just know psychologically your mind is is getting ready to to sacrifice little things so the things of oh well i just want to go out no that's not going to happen you're building up to something that's in three years time you've got to put every effort into this 100 percent effort so you may miss out on family time you may miss out on friendship time you may miss out on just learning just learning the, the small things of just knowing what would take to to just be humble it might just be that i'm focused and i'm focused um to the level where i'm gonna get this but then the the high sometimes doesn't go with the with the lows and the lows is what we really have have an issue with sometimes because we don't know how to deal with the lows the lows might be that you get an injury um a family member has passed away a friend has, has gone into a, has gone into to hospital for, for a lot of people, COVID. Then what do you do? Do you still ride that emotional high or do you just kind of go, you know what? Mm-hmm. I've done what I needed to do and this person needs my help. Then all of a sudden, if you're choosing to, to go for that person and to make sure that you're there for them, now all of a sudden the question is going to be, <sighs> I'm missing out on game time. I'm missing out on preparation i'm missing out on trying to be the best that i can be i'm missing out on all these things that others don't necessarily have and now all of a sudden they're one step ahead they're now two step ahead uh, two steps ahead they're now five steps ahead why because they've where you've taken maybe a a month out they're now four weeks ahead of you in their preparation but you've still got three years to to go you've still got two years and, and 11 months to go that's that's the reality and a lot of people will struggle with that if they don't have the support now christian pulisic um, a a player that plays for chelsea won the champions league this this year with chelsea um played for uh, borussia dortmund before and is an american came out and said what he needed to say about mental health where he's he's finding it tough to live alone and believe me 
and this is speaking from experience, it's not easy. You've got to wake up. You've got to clean the house. You've got to make sure that things are, are put away. You've got to make sure that your house still looks clean. You've got to make sure that your your clothes are, are washed on, are making sure that things are are tough, um, tough on yourself, so that nobody's just praising you for the little the little things that you do. It's it's almost a case of you're doing it on your own. Um, you have to get to work. You have to do this. You have to do that. Socially, you might be a little bit awkward because you know that you're going home by yourself. You're not actually going home with anybody else. You've not got a wife and kids. You've you've just basically got your own your own devices to live by. You got your you've, you're looking around your house and you're going, well, well, that looks new, and it doesn't. It's the same thing that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's a dark patch comes and and you kind of go, eh, well, I didn't know that know that was there, but it's been there for quite some quite some time. You just never really dealt with it. Um, on top of that, Simone Biles brought something up, which I think was was important, where she said it's okay to not have to go for every gold medal that you want. So she decided that she was going to move away from the team sports, and her team actually went and won, and she went for, uh, went away from other uh, other um, individual sports. Because her mental health was not at the place where she wanted it to be. She wasn't right for that, that tournament. She wasn't right for that event. She wasn't right for that gold medal. So she knows that she's got more time on her, on her side to go and win the gold medal. And she went, well, I'm going to use this time just to get my mindset right. To get my mo- a moment in the right place. And I think that that was, that was courageous. Now, there might be some that say... Well, you should have just. Why was you on the Olympic team? Why was you going for this? Why was you going for that? That's what you're you're trained for. And yes, that's something that she's got to deal with from fans and people who don't necessarily know who she is. People are just kind of going, "Well, I've been a fan of um, of Simone Biles for years." Okay, but do you actually know who Simone Biles is? You're just going to get her shirt, and then all of a sudden you're going to go, "Well, here we, I'm here." One of the things that I used to say to a lot of the kids when I was coaching them is you're going to buy a Ronaldo and this messy t-shirt, but they don't necessarily know who you are. They're just going to sign your shirt and then be done with the next person. And then they're going to go to the next person, next person. And you're going to say, well, I'm happy that I got a signed shirt from, from Messi. But he's done that to maybe millions more. So then are you actually feeling great about yourself? And I'm not trying to make this into a negative and derogatory thing, but I want people to actually understand psychologically things can make a difference if we just go and go and get the support go and get the help go and get the the feeling behind us where it's not just oh well messy sign my shirt okay well if somebody else is is wooing and saying hi well done that might feel a little bit more than just kind of you got a shirt signed by messi you just got a shirt signed by ronaldo it might be that you're just wearing the shirt and you've got his name on the back Mm, well, that's all it is. Now, I'm not trying to get get on anybody's back about that, but I'm just saying, well, for now, why don't you become the new you rather than the next Messi, the next Ronaldo? Why don't you become the new you? Messi and Ronaldo have got to the levels that they needed to get to, and it's astronomical because they're beyond and above this planet in terms of who they are, what they do, and how they've, how they've done it. Now the question is, who are you guys? What are you guys all about? Are you guys just saying that I just wanted to get that Barcelona shirt or I'll drop a name in that you probably wouldn't even put into Messi's context, Coventry City. Um, would you put in, would you really go and get one of those shirts when you don't support them? You just like the shirt. Or you just like the player that plays for the shirt. Yes, if it's a friend that plays for that shirt, you know what? You get that shirt all the, all day because you're supporting the club, but you're also supporting the team. You're putting money back into the club that your friend plays for. Great, wonderful, because you're actually building that club up and you're also building that player up because he knows that you've got your support. Barcelona, having a shirt in England, doesn't necessarily mean that Messi knows who you are. It just means that you sold another shirt to Barcelona's um, Barcelona's um, account. 
That is it. Like as I said, I'm not trying to turn this negative, but I'm trying to get at the point of psychologically, what impact does it have just to have that shirt on on your back? If it's a good if if, if it's a good impact, great. If it's not, why are you getting it? Why are you spending that fifty six quid, whatever the price is, just to get that shirt? And now I'm going to ask you socially, what does it feel like just to be socially different? Your crowd is going to be different. People are going to, um, and I'll use this word in the greatest of terms, vibe. People are going to be vibing with you and you've got to kind of work out what the vibe is around you. Now, as an athlete, you might have the same vibe from a set of friends, but then you've got to change that group of friends because come tournament day, they're not going to be there. You've now got to try and put your best efforts into winning that trophy. Winning that uh, medal, winning that, that that feeling, that having that feeling all of all of a sudden, and as a coach, you've now got to spend most of your time preparing that one or maybe group of athletes for that single event. For that single event. Now, what does that say? That's where you have to think about it. That's where you have to kind of go with it, and that's where you have to go it's painful it's not painful in the sense that it's going to be that it's going to be hard but you're going to be a part of somebody's journey that for the next three to four years you're going to have to put your all into it and again you're going to have to make sacrifices you're going to have to say you know what family i've got this going on but i'm going to be here for you you're going to have it's almost going to be like a business that you're the ceo and the person that's running alongside you is the director. And you've got to either direct or, or be the CEO and manage those those influences that will come to your 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 lap, essentially. You've got to give them everything and every little tool that will help them to get to the point where they're not just feeling like they're alone, but they're actually feeling like every single time they step out, you're you've got their back as a coach. You've got them every single day where it's not just, I'm going to do this. I've got this. No, it's whilst you're doing this, I'm going to spur you on. I'm going to be putting putting more frustration in your head because you're not getting where, where we need to get. Or you're so far so far ahead, it's un, unreal, but you need to keep your head on the ground. You need to keep your your feet firmly planted. You need to make sure that anything that goes wrong, you're you're ready for. And that's the difference. That's the keen difference. How do you get that difference to work for, not just as a coach, not just as a sponsor? Sponsors, all they got to do is just put the money in. It's not really that difficult. But what are they putting their money into? The sponsors have to kind of think, well, we don't believe in this political uh, message that they're putting out. Or... It might be that they just put a tweet out and all of a sudden the sponsor just let them go, which means that funding has now disintegrated, has gone. Or it might be that the, the sponsor is the problem. So now the, the, now it's not no longer about the sponsor, it's now about the, about the athlete and their principles. What I'm trying to get at is every little bit really takes its toll physically. Physically, you could be tired off the, the first day, but you've still got another three or four years to, of, to get through just to make sure that you're on the podium for a bronze medal. Just for a bronze medal. That's the reality of this. But yet you're saying, I want to be on, I want to be top the top, but your efforts are only good enough for bronze or even fourth. Same thing with... Uh, the tactical sides, the 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 stuff, the stuff that really really makes a difference. Of if you're running, is it, if you got a run to go for, so a hundred meter, two hundred meter finals, the the four hundred meter relays, um, the four by four uh, hundred meter relays, the one hundred meter, the two hundred meter uh, relay race. All of these little things will be a case of okay. It's not about me ending up with a medal. 
So about me just being there on the track out of the millions that come from the country that you're, you're from, you're the one that is being entrusted with the top thing. And then that feeds in back into the psych psychology is how much of that is pressure? How much of that is people watching you going, you failed? How much of that is people saying you couldn't get it done? How much of that is people saying you weren't right for the job at this time? How much of that is people saying you haven't got the experience, so we aren't going to give you that experience? How much of that is saying the opportunity is there, but you just didn't take it? That's real. That's the reality of, of an athlete's mindset, is that you're just going to be standing there and going, wow, I should have actually thought about this, this in a different way. No, the reality is, is, is an athlete's mindset is all those things are going to be there. But the thing that they have to think about is that gold medal, that championship run, that world record, that Olympic record, that thing that they say, you know what, I've got this, that personal best, that seasonal best, that lifetime best. All the time that they just say, and you know what, I've done the best that I can ever do and there isn't anything anything more that I can give right now. Maybe in a, in a few years time I might be able to give more, but I'm not too sure where I'm going to be at. That's the reality. And people ne necessarily sometimes forget that, is that you don't have that feeling of, I can do this week in, week out. I can't do this every day. I might be able to give you three days this week, but the next four days I need I need time off. I've now just got an injury that, again, if I look at somebody like Dina Rasha Smith, she didn't she failed to um to get into the to the hundred meter finals, but at the same time she was carrying an injury before. The Olympics. She weren't too sure if she was even going to be at the Olympics. The selection process was still open, so therefore she weren't too sure if she was even going to be part of the Olympic um, the Olympic team. Now all of a sudden, she had to withdraw from the two hundred meter final, the two hundred meter um, event. And this is the thing that I feel that most people miss out on as just fans and people who just watch the TV. Now I'm not saying that I'm having a go at anybody with that. But that is a mindset that takes you to a new level, a completely different level. When you know the world is watching you and you have known that people are thinking you're going to let them down. And you're going, I can't let you down. I've come too far for this. I live in this, this area and I need to make sure that I make it or I've got to prove this person wrong and I need to make it or... These people have always believed in me and I now all of a sudden I need to make it. I just have to do something, but I can't. This injury has just taken me back. So I'm not just delving into the athlete's mindset. I'm talking about our coaches as well, is you've done everything you could for that person. You've tried to support them. You've tried to um, believe in them. You've tried to motivate them. You've tried to encourage them. You've tried to do everything that you could. And all they got was fourth. All they got was third. They weren't good enough for the first or second position. And that's the reality. All, all they got was first, but that was it. They got first and then four years time, they came last. Let me, let me put it in this context. Mo Farah did not, com uh, did not qualify for the 5,000 meter um, race this year at the Olympics. He didn't even qualify for um, didn't qualify for it. What does that tell a lot of people? Is that his best run was in twenty twelve? Well, no, he's had a lot of things to deal with off of off of the back of 2012, before and after it. And now all of a sudden, people are going to say, "Well, where was Mo Farah?" Well, my question is. What is it in your life that you're still having to hold on to and having to deal with? What are the conjunct what are the habits that we still feed that the athletes have gone, well, I'm not gonna deal with that. That's not something that I would do. Something the same thing the same thing with coaches. They're not just spending time with the athletes. They're basically there 
24-7 for the athletes, making sure that every single one of them is ready for an Olympic medal or just being there, whatever that means for that person, is that you know what you're going into and you know what you've got to, to give. But what does that look like for that person? You've got to delve into all of this. And I really want people to actually recognise that it's not just that Simone Biles and Alex Scott and all these others were saying what they were saying. It's that this is something massive. It's not just, oh, well, we're going out there to compete and we're getting a heck of a lot of money just to compete. No. If they don't drink that water, if they don't eat those uh, those proper meals, if they don't make sure that they're prepared for um, for every single moment of their life up until that event, they may fail. And as an athlete, failure is more difficult to take than, than win. But it's just as bad just to take a win when you know that there's going to be somebody who says, I should have been better. Just as difficult. But as an athlete, failure is more difficult to take than it is to win. And as a coach, it's a lot more difficult to accept failure. Accept failure from somebody who you've worked for for so long. It's more difficult to understand what failure looks like. And all you've done is prepare for the best part of four years for the same event that you're going to continue to do for the next 10 years of your life with the hope of a sponsor coming through and saying, we've got you. Please have a look at it from a, from a mentality of we're all, we're all here for you. We're all here to support you, but also remind yourself that the athletes are just as human. Yes, they might be on TV, but they're no different to the people that you normally see, that you normally go to work with, that you normally drive in a car with, that you normally go home and say hi to, that you normally just kind of go, you know what, are you okay today? You might see them every day, but the athletes you'll probably see once, a, once every year or once every four years. Please look after your mental health. Please make sure that everything is right. And um, yeah, I know that I've gone in a, in an objective and subjective way, but as far as I'm concerned, you got a bit of myself from this, and I hope you get more from from the from the other hosts. Mine, this is who I am. It's not been easy for me, and I've been watching this, and I feel very deeply about how Simone Biles. And so many others have spoken about their, their happiness or their mental health. It's not easy to talk about, especially when there's labels being put on every single person nowadays. Let's just say that they, they, they need, they want the support. So that's why they're asking for it. That's the real, that's the reality. It's not easy to ask for it, but it's almost more difficult to accept it. And I speak in from the heart and I speak in from a place of subjectively, that's speaking from myself. It's not an object. It's not sub, this is all about the subject for, for myself. This is personal. So I'm going to leave you with this question. What habits do you have? That maybe an athlete doesn't. And I don't mean just food, water and, and blah, blah, blah and drinking and what and whatnot. But actually go in and, and find out what an actual athlete has to go through in order to get to that level. And you don't have to go and train the way an athlete does. I'm just saying, just answer, just think about the question of what they have to do. What sacrifice they've, they've got to make to be the best the best that their industry can offer. Let's go with that. That's a question for you guys. Been a different tone, but I'm going to give you 
that's who I am. That's how this is. Yours truly, JBK, coming to you with another special from the Olympics. Peace. Join the Pitch Talk revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com 